Hey guys, it's Chuck again, back with another tutorial. So I've been noticing a lot of tutorials and articles describing how to use Amazon S3 buckets to serve media to Django. Now, uh, unfortunately, almost every one of these shows how to do this in the most dangerous way possible. How you ask? We'll get into that right now. Okay, so... Because I could not find any good tutorials showing how to do this with a private S3 bucket, and we'll get into why we need to have it private in a moment, uh, I figured I'd just make one real quick to hopefully help somebody out. Uh, so the very first thing we're going to do is obviously we're going to be working with a Django framework. Uh, we'll switch over to our ID uh, here in a moment. But first thing we're going to want to do to get everything set up is we're going to go to AWS, log in, make our account. And we're going to create an Amazon S3 bucket. I've already done this ahead of time. Uh, so I'm just going to kind of walk you through this. I make this tutorial bucket here. And as you can see in the bucket, we have a couple of pictures of me that I just have in here for um, demonstration purposes. And so when we go on the permissions, this is the big problem that I was seeing with almost every tutorial uh, using this for Django is the tutorials all unanimously showed you to make your bucket public. So they wanted you to have all of this off. Please do not do that. Um, having your bucket public, uh, especially if you're putting anything out there on the internet or using this for a company project or just anything in general where the public can get their hands on it. Uh, you, you want to make sure you have it private and block public access. The reason being is because if anybody gets your, bu your bucket information and it's public, uh, they can start overloading your bucket uh, with objects and or spamming it with lead requests, all of which are going to incur costs for you. And we want to avoid that at all costs. We want to try and make this secure. So when you make your bucket, make sure that you now block all public access on uh, after that, you're not going to need to make any button policies or anything like that. Then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create an I am user. So what I did is I created this tutorial user here, and I have assigned this user to my S3 bucket group, which has Amazon S3 full access. Um, if you need to add that, or if you're not sure how to add these to the user or your group, all you have to do is open up the group, just like I am here, add permissions, attach a policy, and if we search, we can just do S3. There, if you have it added, but it would show here as S3 full access. And then you would just click on that, it's like attach policy. Okay. So once we have that user created, uh, you can either attach the policy directly to the user or to a group. They need to have the S3 full access policy attached to either one of those. We're going to go to the user and what's going to allow us to access this uh, private S3 bucket are programmatic keys. So we're going to open up our user, go to security credentials, and we are going to go down to access keys here, and we're going to create access keys. Uh, normally, you wouldn't want to share these uh, with anybody. Uh, so before anybody spams the comments that I'm, you know, doing something dangerous, this is all going to be deleted before it ever goes up on YouTube. Uh, but you're going to click create access key. You're going to get your access ID key, and you're also going to get a secret access ID. You're going to want to write those down somewhere where you're not going to lose them. And then we're going to jump over to our IDE. Um, and I'll get to this in a moment, but you're going to want to set up your uh, uh, .env file in your base project. Okay. So your first folder directory, we're going to set up a .env. And then you're going to need to add your access key, which was that um, key that I just highlighted. You're going to paste it here just like this. And the same thing with your secret access key. You're going to need uh, your unique S3 bucket name. 
going to be added here and also the region that you're working in. Then we're going to pop over to settings. Uh, in order to do this, you're going to need to install um, Django and Viral. If you don't have that already, it's just pip install. Here, uh, I actually have the server running right now, so I don't really want to touch the terminal here. But um, here, I'll just take it off the side. It'll just be pip install Django. Just like that, run it in your terminal uh, with your virtual environment. It'll install it. And then you would just import it like this. Uh, I'm going to attach the link to the documentation on Django uh, Wire on uh, the description here. Once you have that done, you're going to create an environment object using that. You can just copy this code here. Uh, if anybody wants it, um, just leave a comment. I'll, I'll repaste it in the comment. Uh, then below our base directory, we're going to want to give it a path to our .env. You could just copy and paste this or uh, copy this. It's going to work the same for everybody. And then down at the bottom, actually, before we get there, uh, I'm actually using uh, ngrock right now to do um, HTTPS, even though I'm on my local machine, just to show you that it will work with a secure channel instead of just regular HTTP. So there we're going to scroll down to our bottom here and the same variables that we put in our .env file, we're going to put here, but this time, uh, we're going to use our env object and we're going to access those variables within the env, right? Okay. So now once we have all this done, uh, when we go to access our images that are in S3, which I will show you real quick. Go back to S3, you can see that I'm not fibbing. Right out where it be our, we also have a test image directory here. It's just the way I set up the model to upload images. And it. Aha, because it is not public, I can't access it without the programmatic keys. Gotcha. So we're going to open up ngrock here. We're going to use our your URL. Okay. So there's the AI generated image of me that's going to pull up there. All right. Uh, show that works. Then we got two. And so this is where I'm storing these images. We're going to create a new user because I have it set up. Uh, so there, that image three. I have it set up so whenever you create a new user, they're automatically going to be assigned with this default PNG here um, to their user profile. So let's just say data ID number two. Uh, save a child then it's going to go back to I want to want to go to click I want to get the personal ID two Go back to our one and only A. You shouldn't change. Oh. Different AI picture of me with a million teeth and ugly eyes. But uh, that's that's basically it. That's how it works, guys. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, um, any more insights on this type of stuff, uh, just leave a comment for me. Uh, if this helped you out at all, please like and subscribe. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it.